Hey guys, it's Phil with the Minuteman Moment. If you thought that the anti-gunners were done for this Congress, you're wrong. According to them, it's always time to go after the guns. And there's no surprise here, but Gun Owners of America is opposed to H.R. 1808. That's the assault weapons ban of 2021. This bill is a regurgitation of the expired and very failed assault weapons ban of 94, but a lot worse. And as you probably know, if you watch this channel, the assault weapons ban back in the 90s was a total failure, according to the National Institute of Justice, which said it failed to reduce the average number of victims per gun murder incident or multiple gunshot victims. But while this new bill is a retread of the 94 bill, they added a lot more horsepower to the engine. This bill targets nearly all semi-auto weapons, magazines, and even firearm accessories like semi-auto triggers and suppressors. And you would think that if they're gonna strip us of our rights, they would have the decency, I don't know if that's the right word, to let us grandfather in certain types of firearms but not with this one. The grandfather clause can be described like a backdoor National Firearms Act or NFA with a de facto gun registration and regulations on even temporary transfers to family that can easily result in federal criminal prosecution and gun confiscation. We obviously describe this bill as unconstitutional, an infringement, not necessary, evil, and more clumsy than buy down a bike. But here's one word I wanna use when I describe it, broad. That's because this new ban would declare nearly all commonly owned firearms as semi-automatic assault weapons and would therefore ban their importation, possession, sale, or transfer of those firearms with very limited exceptions. So when you dig into the bill, what might get your gun banned? Well, let's take a look. The semi-automatic rifles are banned for having a non-fixed magazine and either a pistol grip, a forward grip, a grenade launcher, a barrel shroud, there's that barrel shroud, a threaded barrel, or a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock. Is anybody writing these bills know exactly how many guns that fit this definition are in this country right now? Maybe tens of millions, if not more. We're talking about nearly every single personal defense rifle in the country. We're talking about nearly every single rifle that would be used by an American to defend themselves from a tyrannical government, whether domestic or foreign, but we can keep going. And what about semi-automatic pistols? These are banned for having non-fixed magazines and a threaded barrel, a secondary pistol grip, a barrel shroud, a stabilizing brace, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine outside of the pistol grip, weighing 50 ounces or more, or being a semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. This includes all of your AR and AK pistols, and maybe even your Glocks and 1911s, as there are automatic versions of those firearms as well. That's just incredible. There are millions of these types of guns in the country right now, and this law would make people who own them felons, just for following what the ATF told them they could do anyway. But of course, they've gotta go after shotguns because why stop at just rifles and pistols? Because it's not about your safety, it's about what they call weapons of war. It's about disarming you so that you're helpless. It's about making you rely on the government because they're allowed to have all these weapons. Semi-automatic shotguns are banned for having non-fixed magazines, grenade launcher, a pistol grip, a bird's head grip, a forward grip, the ability to accept a detachable magazine a fixed magazine of over five rounds, or a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock. This ban also includes shotguns with revolving cylinders. Before I go on, let's just think about this. There's an entire generation of Americans who remember what it's like to walk into a gun store and purchase a fully automatic rifle. Yeah, you had to go through the pointless and bureaucratic and unconstitutional NFA to get it, but you could basically get it done. And there's a generation that came up right after they were made illegal and while we never had the opportunity to buy them at a gun store, we all at least could hear from people who did and how great it was to do that. But what about the people coming up after us? They'll have even less of a connection to that sort of freedom and the culture around the Second Amendment that has been diminished. The same thing holds true for the types of bans that they're trying to institute with this law. Our liberties, our freedoms, our culture is only a generation away from extinction but with the way things are going, we could lose them within the same generation. It's easy for people to get beat and feel dejected by the overwhelming force of these politicians that wanna strip us of our rights. So that's why we never give an inch. That's why we're here in Washington and all around the country. So anyway, let's go a little deeper into the legislation. The ban on ammunition feeding devices includes both fixed 
and detachable magazines, because of course it does. Regardless of the original design of a firearm's standard ammunition capacity, any device that can accept more than 10 rounds or can be converted to accept more than 10 rounds is banned as a large capacity ammunition feeding device. Under the ban, it's going to be illegal to import, sell, manufacture, transfer, or possess such a large capacity ammunition feeding device subject to limited grandfathering exceptions. But here's the kicker. These large capacity ammunition feeding devices are not grandfathered. So that means even if you want to hand down your AR-15 or Glock 17 in the future to your kids, they're not going to be able to use any of the magazines that were grandfathered in. This is going to limit their ability to defend themselves with subpar, smaller capacity magazines. Here's just one example. There's a case of a 61-year-old woman in Texas who woke up while being robbed, fired all of her bullets, yet was still beaten because she didn't have enough ammo to take down both intruders. Her first thought after recovering, planning to buy another gun, presumably with greater capacity. This bill defines grandfathered semi-automatic assault weapon as any otherwise banned firearm that is lawfully purchased on the date of enactment of the assault weapons ban of 2021. Grandfathered weapons, however, are subject to a universal background check. Of course they are on all transfers, which register the weapon on a 4473 and which will eventually be included in the ATF's illegal, national, digital, and very searchable gun registry in West Virginia. We've made a ton of videos about that. You should go ahead and check those out. But that's what this is all about. It always comes back to the registry. Why is that? Because this was never about safety. It's always about control. They don't want you to have the freedom to defend yourself. They want you to comply. And here's one more important point. This is going to cause an explosion in the black market. Why is it that people who already have their guns get to keep their guns for now, but new gun owners get punished? You're going to turn them into criminals. The reason is because this bill drives at the heart of the issue. They want to destroy gun culture and we want to preserve it and pass it on. If this bill passes, there's no reason to believe they'll stop there. They're going to have a completed registry of all gun owners and that brings them one step closer to confiscation. If this bill passes, it's everything we've been warning about for decades. Thanks for watching. Stay updated on the latest assault weapons ban information by subscribing and make sure others know by sharing this video. Make sure your representative and senator knows this bill is poison and anyone who supports this doesn't support the Constitution. Use the link in the description below and send a pre-written message to them and also call the phone number provided below to talk to your representative and your senators and leave a brief message on your adamant opposition to this bill. After that, you can leave a comment below. Thanks a lot.